Miss Miklos here, and this is our first lecture of Chapter 11. But technically, we're calling it 11.2 because their first one was supposed to be on distance and midpoint, and I think that's too easy, so we're skipping it. Don't worry, it's not on the test either. But um, we are starting with talking about circles, and just to give you guys some context for this chapter, this chapter is on what we call conic sections. And there are four conic sections that we're going to be talking about this particular chapter. Circles, parabolas, hyperbolas, and ellipses. And I know some of them are more familiar than others, but um, we definitely will get used to learning about all four of these. So we're going to start with our definition here. Our definition of a circle is in a plane, the set of all points a given distance, which we call R. R represents our radius away from the center, which is H and K. Okay, so basically it means that if we have a center and a circle has a radius that is a specific distance, and all the points on the circle are that distance away from the center. So the general formula that we're going to see, and we definitely should have this memorized, is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. And every single time that you are graphing um, a circle, we should first of all identify that it is a circle, and we'll talk about how to do that. But secondly, I should see two characteristics on every graph. The first is the center, which we find H and K. And those are actually the opposites of whatever's in here. So if it said X minus 2, my X value of my center would be 2, because the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. I also want to point out that whatever's in here with x is our x value of the center. Whatever's in the parenthesis with y is our y value of the center. Okay, and we should be used to this whole hk stuff from when we did parabolas last semester. Second thing I need to see is the radius. The radius is r, which if we look, the equation is equal to r squared. So what I'm really doing is square rooting r squared. So if I had 9 over here, my radius would be 3. And I'm going to mention something right away because some of you are thinking, well, if I use a positive, I'm sorry, if I use an even index number, we should put plus or minus. However, we know that a radius is a distance. Distances can only be positive. So that's why we would only refer to the radius as being a positive value. Now our characteristics, there are three specific things that tell us that something is a circle. And kind of like last chapter, um, I think our lessons individually can be pretty simple. For example, everything on this homework assignment is a circle. However, when we get to our test, one of the things we need to do is identify what type of equation is this. So there are three specific things that let us know that something is a circle. The first is that both x squared and y is squared. Okay, so we have two variables that are squared. So if I only see that either x is squared or that y is squared, we know that it would not be a circle. Our second characteristic is that when x squared and y squared are on the same side, we need a plus sign. Okay, so it is going to be x squared plus y squared. And our third and final characteristic is that in order to know that something is a circle, x squared and y squared both have to have the same coefficient. So it might say 4x squared plus 4y squared, that would be a circle because x squared and y squared both have a coefficient of 4. If it said x squared plus 4y squared, that would not be a circle because they have different coefficients. Okay, so let's get straight into our examples here. So if we look at number one, um, first of all, I can tell this is a circle because both x and y are squared. They're added together, and x and y have the same coefficient. The other thing that I notice is that looks this looks like it is in the correct form. So I need to go ahead and figure out what is my center, and then what is my radius. To find the center, normally we look inside our parentheses. However, I don't have any parentheses here, so that means that we have a zero for our x value, okay, for our center, which means our h is like zero. And since I do not have parentheses with y, that's like my k value is zero. So my center is zero, zero. To find our radius, I'm looking at nine and I'm going to take the square root of that and we're gonna say our radius is three. 
So I'm going to write this is a circle. I'm starting at 0, 0, and I'm going to go out 3 in all directions. And to make life easy, you guys can kind of see I'm just going up, down, to the right, and to the left. And then I'm going to draw a beautiful circle. Okay. Now, notice I am not perfect, and my circle did not go exactly at 3. If I see this information and I saw that you graphed it like this, I would give you full credit. Okay, we don't need to break out the compass and make it look perfect. This is completely adequate. Okay, so let's do another one that is about the same level of difficulty. Looking at number two, I notice that both x and y are squared. We have addition, and we have the same coefficient, which is 1. So once again, I know that this has to be a circle, so I'm going to write circle on my graph. Okay, we need to find the center and we need to find the radius. This time we actually have values inside here. So I know I'm taking the opposite. So the opposite of three would be negative three. The opposite of negative two would be two. So I know that our center here is negative three, two. To find our radius, I'm taking the square root of r squared, so I have the square root of five. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really like graphing a radical if um, it asks us to leave it in simplified radical form, this would be perfect. Um, but in order to graph, I'm actually going to figure out what is the decimal value of radical 5. I know it's a little bit above 2, but let's put that in our calculator to see. And it is, let me get back to my pen here, it is 2.2. .2. Now, I'm just going to leave it like that because I highly doubt I'm even going to be um, accurate to the nearest tenth, let alone the nearest hundredth. So if you guys just gave me this information, that would be great. Now I need to graph it. So I'm going to go to the left three and up two. And that is my center. Now from my center, I need to go out 2.2. So I'm going to go 2.2, 1, 2.2, 2.2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. and you guessed it, 2.2. So I'm going to go ahead and connect those four points, and there is my circle. Okay, so only thing that makes this one a little bit different is we actually had values for H and K, so our center was not 0, 0. In order to find all the points on our circle, then, I need to go from the center out 2.2 versus just going out from the origin. Okay, so 1 and 2 are examples of about as simple as circles get. And now we get to lovely number three, and all of a sudden life is not quite as simple anymore. And the major culprit for that is I have this extra X and I have this extra Y, and you guys did that review on completing the square already, and if you didn't, you need to do that. Um, but that's a signal to me, since I have this extra X and this extra Y, that I do need to use completing the square. I can still tell, though, that this is a circle because both x and y are squared. I have addition, and the squared terms have the same coefficients. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to group my x's together and group my y's together. And I'm going to move my constant over to the other side. And you guys may remember, um, in order to complete the square here, I'm going to take our middle coefficient, so I'm going to take 2, I'm going to divide it by 2, and then square that value. So that means that I'm actually going to go ahead and add 1 inside the parentheses, and I know whatever I add to one side, I also have to add to the other side. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here in our y parentheses. I'm taking this middle coefficient, which is 4, I'm dividing it by 2, which is 2. 2 squared, then, is 4, so I'm adding 4 inside. I'm adding 4 also to the other side because we do need to balance our equations. Now if I'm looking at this, we have created two different perfect square trinomials. And when we dealt with parabolas, we only, did, we only had to deal with creating one perfect square trinomial. But notice we really did the same thing, we just did it twice. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this. Our trick 
was that this number is always half of this middle coefficient because this is a perfect square trinomial. So I have the quantity x plus 1 squared. Just a reminder, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. With my y's, I need to figure out what is half of 4, and that would be 2. And once again, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times plus 2 is 4, equals 9. So, at this point, I can tell that my center is negative 1, negative 2, and my radius is 3 because I'm taking the square root of 9. Okay, so looking at this problem, this is definitely a more difficult circle problem. So if I ever see these extra x's and y's hanging out, I know that is a signal to me that I need to complete the square. So now let's go ahead and graph this. Okay, so if I'm graphing this, I'm going negative 1, negative 2, and then from there I need to go 3 in all directions. 3, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that circle. Now, if I really wanted to check if this worked, I could choose an ordered pair that is on this circle, and when I substitute it into the original equation, it should make a true statement. For example, um, I'm going to choose negative 1, 1, okay? If I substituted negative 1, 1 into this, I would end up getting 0. So that is a good thing just to double check if you have additional time and want to make sure that you did everything correctly. And number 4 is our final example of the day, or I should say of the lecture. And when I look at this, I can tell it's a circle because I have both x and y are squared. They are added together, and x squared and y squared both have the same coefficient. Now looking at this, it definitely is not in the correct form. I can see from this extra y that I need to complete the square. Now notice this time, x squared is totally fine. I don't have an extra x, so I'm just going to leave x squared by itself, and I'm grouping my y's together. I'm also going to add 5 to the other side. Now I need to determine what could I add in here in order to make this a perfect square trinomial. So I know that I'm going to take our middle coefficient, which is 4, divide it by 2, and square it. 2 squared I know is 4, so I'm going to go ahead and add 4 to both sides. So whenever I'm creating a perfect square trinomial, I'm taking our middle coefficient, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. If you guys need more practice on this, look back in Chapter 5. We spent an entire lesson just on completing the square. So now we're going to have to go ahead and factor this. Okay, I know the right side 5 plus 4 is 9. So I need to think, what is half of 4? Half of 4 is 2, so this becomes x squared plus the quantity y plus 2 squared equals 9. My center is 0, negative 2, because I don't have anything in the parentheses, so that's where my 0 comes. In my y parentheses, I'm taking the opposite of 2, which is negative 2. And my radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. So now we're going to go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to start with my center, which is 0, negative 2. And then I'm going to go out 3 in all directions. And I'm going to go ahead and connect those points with our circle. So even though this was a shorter lecture, hopefully you guys are kind of seeing what makes something a circle specifically. Um, we also need to know how do we find the center, how do we find the radius, and lastly, by looking at equation, how do I know when I need to use completing the square in order to get it into the correct form?